I'm good. So hello, everybody, and welcome back to this week's episode of Hello, It's Better to Talk. And today I am thrilled to be telling you or oh, introducing you to Mira Shah, who is going to tell us about her story of empowerment and how to make your life filled with purpose. But, you know, I mean, Mira and I were just having a quick chat before we started today, and we're talking about how our own life story, you know, helps lead us onto the path of our purpose. So, Mira, I'd love to hand over to you, and if you can tell us about empower how we empower ourselves and what what our life purpose is and so because that's really what it's all about on the planet isn't it it's pointless if we don't know what we're doing here and honestly it really is and I've seen purpose banded about for a long time but um just literally before this call I googled purpose came up with four billion results four billion so obviously there is a big thing about purpose it's obviously a really big topic right um i haven't checked what COVID is but four billion results is huge so what this tells me is that it's not just me it's so many people are looking for purpose and they're looking for meaning because the two obviously are linked or people use them interchangeably so you know I have you know it's it's a huge topic and it's a big thing and I can vouch for it I think what happened to me is that I mean I used to be shy I used to be anxious I used to be an introvert ended up in banking don't know how many years ago you know when you're young you kind of stumble into careers or jobs or money and as I and you know over a long time I became really good at what I did but I was so unhappy I was unhappy with my values weren't aligned to what was going on there I had no desire to grow in that industry just because I, I had become a different per person and I never ever found like I didn't want to just deliver projects for a bank which is what I was essentially doing and I didn't want to be really good at that I wanted to do something much more fulfilling and that was the purpose part and in the end, over the last few years, I've been really unhappy and that led into depression. It led into anxiety. It led into some, you know, real health problems. I ended up with a lot, quite a few health problems. And I used to lie there just, you know, um, if some people might relate to this, but you know, those nights when you can't sleep and then you start having conversations with God, you know, whatever your version of God is, but it's kind of like, oh my God, why have you forget forgotten me? Why is this happening to me? I need your help. Get me out of here. So I was having all those conversations, but I didn't know where else to turn to kind of thing as I couldn't sleep. Anyway, in the end, slowly, slowly, all came together for me and really as I kind of started relaxing a bit, I started kind of hearing the message. And the thing that made a difference and that made me get up out of my funk was, if that door is shut, there's another door for you. And that door was never your purpose because you've been unhappy for a long, long time. And find your purpose and that then will lead you to a path of joy and um and I've seen the difference in my life so my purpose initially started with you know I've always been a career coach and I've always wanted to empower people it's been amazing but then I kind of understood now and especially after COVID the big thing is make your purpose bigger than you and that then I'll talk about how that helps empowerment okay. in a second but I understood then that when I made my purpose so much bigger than me, my fears became small, my imposter syndrome became small, my unhappiness became small because I felt part of a bigger collective and I felt part of a bigger momentum. And then I saw so many people up doing their part for this collective. Who am I not to play my part? So what if I'm feeling scared? Everybody's playing their part and I've got to jump in. And it, it just gave me the drive and the mojo and the passion to kind of get up out of everything I was feeling and just find my path of joy, find myself belonging somewhere in this collective. And, you know, and then I realized every little thing I did made a difference. But when I was in my job, not being funny, but I, was, I felt like a robot and I felt whether I did something or not, 
it didn't really have a significance. So this, the, when you were saying that the messages were kind of coming to you at night, did you know when you were talking to God and and there was a sort of, you know, there, there was an answer to you. I often find it's in, it is in the middle of the night, isn't it? It's the, the quiet time of night for me that when I feel as if I'm, you know, where, where there isn't the, the chatter going on, but somehow or other one connects into a different part of oneself whether it's a higher consciousness or god or however we choose to talk about it but you know it you can do that but that voice is quite quiet it's not a voice that's for me that's kind of booming going hello you've got to do this it's sort of like a a feeling and following but so tell me tell me what it's like for you because i'm you know how do we share this stuff with the world it's so and and it's exactly everything you said do you know what it is it's because that's when the world is quiet so we're not on Facebook and we're not we're not distracted by all these other things and thoughts that are going on around us and then you don't feel guilty for oh I should be doing cleaning job hunting whatever it is your to-do list is because it's the middle of the night you don't it's the time finally you stop and you listen and it's for you because you're not distracted by all these other things going on around you and in your head and all that so you finally just stop and be and that's the important thing I think and that's why they say meditation is so important because the art of being allows what you call that higher intelligence that higher wisdom a higher part of yourself to come and kind of guide you and speak you through whatever you're going through um, and, and it really involves, you know, and a lot of people are really scared of facing up to who they are, or they're really scared of meeting who they are. For me, I've never understood it because that's always excited me. But I do know people are really scared of meeting themselves. So they stay in their minds. And it really involves you to just come out of your mind and just, you know, a little bit of surrender, a little bit of drop into your heart, a little bit of being and seeing what comes up. Okay, so do you meditate every day? I do. I, I, uh, I, I'm a big meditator. So over the last 10 years, I've kind of gone down. I think this is part of the unhappiness and outgrowing the values in the banking world. I also have been on a really deep spiritual path. So I can meditate for at least, I'll at least do an hour a day. Most days I do two, at least two hours and on weekends I might do three. Two hours, three hours. Wow. That's <laughs> Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So and do, like, a hot, like two hours all at once or no I'll spread them out so I'll always do an hour before I go to bed because like you say that I think that's when I feel like I've stopped and before I sleep I want a quality sleep and then also I get more things come through in my dream and I wake up feeling quite different um and then I try and at least do half an hour in the morning I'm not a morning person which is a shame <laughs> <laughs> but uh, then I'll try and squeeze in another hour or half an hour at lunchtime when when it all gets a bit too much my arm like, oh, gone back into my mind and then I'll just stop and go okay let me breathe and just see what's important and tune in okay okay well, amazing advice so um so tell me about what your thoughts are about empowerment then how do we how do we empower ourselves in our lives to live lives with purpose and you know meaningfully on the planet I suppose because lots of us are I think lots of people are searching for a meaning at the moment they really are and it's kind of um, I think I really think where we're being taken to is if you can make it about we rather than me you know we grow together and we thrive together and it's just more beautiful um, you know and um, so for me some tips you know you have to kind of get out of your mind into your heart a little bit big challenge for a lot of us for me it was for a long time as well um and a way to do that is just through the breath you know just quieten your mind with the breath and soften and let it drop into your heart and try breathing from your heart um another way is just being aware going where are these thoughts coming from and we go oh that's totally my mind it's something i read it's something i heard it's not your heart when you when it's your heart I think there's an emotion involved and and it and obviously if it's a positive emotion you're on the right track it's a negative emotion park it not for you kind of thing mm -hmm. and the other thing I think is just make you at the center of everything it's not what you should do what you've been told what's sensible it's 
you know what, where's, where am I in all of this? And who's me in all of this? And when you ask that question and you connect, I think everything just flows easier. Right. And so do you, I mean, when you ask yourself, because I think one of, one of the big things in life is to ask ourselves the right questions, you know, that, and sometimes the answers come later. But um, I remember a friend of mine saying, uh, well, I always ask myself, what will make me happy? And I thought, wow, that's a great question, but it's not one that makes any, it doesn't kind of sit with me, but, you know, I kind of go, I don't know what will make me happy, but I'm, but what, what is something that's meaningful in my life is a good question. That does this meet my life's purpose is a good question for me. So what, what kind of questions do you ask yourself? And happiness, just to go back to what you said, it's, it's really complex because, First of all, you know, what even is happiness to you? And this it's just it's just that we're so predefined by what happiness should look like. But is that really your happiness? Because we're all unique. And anyway, just like that's a different subject. But some questions to ask yourself. I think it's really simple for me. It's the same three questions. OK, is this I know there's a sensibility part that I'll cover at the end, but it's like, OK, hang on. Is this coming from my mind or my heart? Mm -hmm. yeah and I think mostly you do know <laughs> and then it's like does this feel joyful or does it feel heavy ah that's a good question yeah if it feels heavy it's it's not for you and it's probably not your you picked up somebody else's programs is it joyful yes is it feel heavy mm, probably not for me and then the third thing is is this is this for me? Is this going to make me get out of bed every day? Is this important enough for me to get out of bed every day? Mm. Well, those are great questions. Yeah. Okay. All right. There's, I think I'm going to take, take, I love that one about, is this joyful or is this heavy as well? I, I, I really love, I love, love living a life of joy, but you know, but then there is a lot of, you've also, we've all also got to take the rubbish out, haven't we? And, you know, things like that and clean up. So we, you know, we've got to get, we've got to be real about it. So you, you're talking about like big things that you might be doing in terms of your work. Is that what, is that what you're, when you we would ask those questions, Mira? Yeah, it, it's more about work. It's more about, you know, God, I've got this decision or this decision, the bigger decisions, you know, yeah, we all have to do stuff. It's just stuff, though. But when you're in a state of joy, um, you find that stuff is actually less painful to do. It's just stuff, but you're feeling good. So you've got more strength, the empowerment, and you can just take the rubbish out. You try taking the rubbish out on a day when you're feeling really down or horrible it feels three times worse than it does when you're feeling joyful. Yeah, scientifically proven. I think that's absolutely right. It's just... <laughs> I didn't know it was scientifically proven. I know, no, no. Well, I'm just saying that actually, but I just, it, does, it really sure does it feel is. like, it, 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 does feel, it does feel like that, doesn't it? Yeah, I remember just last week I went to visit Clavelli, which is this little fishing village, and it's, it's only half a mile down. And, you know, obviously it's a half a mile up again, but it feels like it's about a quarter of a mile down and three miles up, you know, because you go to the, it's just that different feeling. So you said that you were going to talk about sensibility as well. Tell, tell, tell us about sensibility. So just, it's, I think it was that thing of, look, just, I'm just going back to this little example you gave, but it's basically, okay, I don't want to take the rubbish out. Some things just have to be done. But when you're in a state of joy, they don't feel so painful. They don't feel so irritating. Other people don't feel so irritating. So find your joy and then everything else is tolerable. And, you know, yes, yeah, some things have to happen. So, but, but can you be in a state of joy while taking the rubbish out? Of course you can, right? Mm -hmm. You can say I don't like, you can say I don't like this particular incident, but you don't have to take the joy out it's just like oh I don't like this action but I'm still joyful mm. okay and and there's things like you know you might think oh I, I hate my job I want to quit it tomorrow but there's there's um there's this great guy it's called Abraham if you've ever heard of them and they talk about don't jump off a plane without a parachute kind of thing it's like look you might think okay I really hate my job but then you don't have to just 
hand in your notice tomorrow. That's not what I'm saying. It's even being aware of this doesn't give me joy. So then how do I move towards the joy? What are the next steps? You know, it doesn't have to be like from the frying pan into the fire kind of thing. <laughs> okay, so don't kind of, yeah, j jump off a, don't jump off a plane without a parachute. It's a very good, very good analogy. Okay, that's that's great, Mira. Is, is there anything else that you'd like to add in terms of helping people find their purpose? So I would just say, you know, you really look at what's current on the planet. What are the things that really bother you? And then where is the I and where is the you in there? Like, what are the things you're passionate about, but passionate enough that you want to do something about it? Because I know we all have a lot of bugbears. There's a lot of things going wrong on the planet, obviously. But find your two or three bugbears and think, which ones do I actually want to do? do something about which ones have I got the skills to do something about which ones do I care enough to do something about and then link your passion to why do we and that will even empower you because when you're connected to something bigger then it really helps the other thing I want I would I would really say helps me is finding really good role models hmm. so it's those days we think I can't and then you find people who have really done it they should inspire you. My favorite two at the minute are, um, I don't know if you heard of this guy called Daniel Lubetsky. He founded a whole company on being kind and kindness and kind to the product, the community's employees. And he sold it for $5 billion. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's so needed on the planet right now. Absolutely. And the other person who inspires me a lot is Michelle Obama because everything she stands for, she's got so much integrity. So, you know, find people who just inspire you like I'm not going to be as strong as Michelle but whenever I think I can't I think of what she puts herself through and I think no no I can't yeah yeah no I think I'm I, I feel very lucky that we're living through a time where Michelle Obama's on the planet I mean Barack too but Michelle is just amazing so all hail Michelle <laughs> oh I'm a fan yeah, yeah no no, no I think she's... get my vote when she runs for president <laughs> absolutely if only she would uh, I think she'd walk it. But anyway, um, uh, Mira, thank you. That is so kind. Um, thank you for your, your your thoughts and helping people live more purposeful lives on the planet. And we'll drop down below um, all the details about how you can get in contact with Mira and her transformational work, because she's all about being in nature and transforming yourself and living life with purpose. So thanks very much, everybody, and see you next week, Wednesday at noon for Hello, It's Better to Talk. Thank you. And thank you for having me. It's been such a pleasure. Great. Thank you. Right.